In this video, we're going to look at periodic inventory system and how we do the calculations for cost of goods sold. In a periodic inventory system, cost of goods sold is recorded and calculated periodically at the end of the accounting cycle. As you recall, in perpetual, it's continually recorded and calculated. Cost of merchandise sold, cost of goods sold, now becomes a schedule within the income statement. Under perpetual, it is simply a line item on the income statement. Let's take a look at an illustration, the Cupcake Junkie. The Cupcake Junkie is an accounting student with a big test coming up. He decides that he needs to go into his cupboard and see how many cupcakes he has on hand. He determines he has three cupcakes on hand. That will never do to make it through an all-night study session because he loves cupcakes. So he goes to the store and buys a new box. A new box of cupcakes has 12 cupcakes. The next morning he goes and he takes his exam and when he comes home he decides to find out how many cupcakes did he eat while he was studying. Well he counts what's left and he has five cupcakes in his cupboard. How many cupcakes were consumed? This illustrates our cost of goods sold in inventory procedure in a very simple manner. However, let's just take a look at this. We had three cupcakes. We bought 12. That gives us 15. We have five left. That means that 10 were consumed. In the periodic system, we have several accounts that we are adding to our list of accounts. We have an account called Purchases. That's where our things we buy to sell are going to go. It has a debit balance. We have an account called Purchase Returns and Allowances. When we return something or we get an allowance from a company that we bought something from, it's a credit balance. We have a Purchase Discount account. This is where our discounts go. It is a credit balance. And we have transportation in or freight in, and this is a debit balance. Here's an illustration of a cost of merchandise, cost of goods sold schedule within the income statement. We begin with beginning inventory at a certain date, beginning of the period, perhaps 1 1. Then we're going to add our cost of goods purchased. We're going to look at this particular schedule because this is a schedule all by itself in the next picture. The beginning inventory plus the goods that we've purchased gives us our merchandise or goods available for sale. Then we take an ending inventory at a certain date. Perhaps this is one month's worth, January 31st. The difference between what we started with and what we purchased and then subtracting out what's left becomes our cost of merchandise, cost of goods sold. Those items are what we sold. Within the cost of merchandise, cost of goods sold schedule, we had the line cost of merchandise, goods purchased. It is its own schedule, and it happens to deal with how do we come up with what we purchased. Remember, we added a lot of accounts at the beginning of this uh, video, and we have now our purchases minus our purchased returns and allowances, minus our purchase discounts, to give us net purchases. To our net purchases, we add in our transportation in. This is the amount of money we paid to ship goods to us. It becomes a part of our purchase cost. All of this together becomes the cost of merchandise, cost of goods purchased. Let's take a look at an example. We're going to calculate the cost of merchandise sold, cost of goods sold. Our beginning inventory is $5,000, our purchases $120,000, our ending inventory $10,000. Well, how do we do this? We're going to take our beginning plus our purchases minus our ending inventory, which is going to give us $115,000. Let's review some key differences between perpetual and periodic inventory systems. Under the perpetual method, 
The merchandise inventory account increases when inventory is purchased or returned from customers. The merchandise inventory account decreases when inventory is sold. The perpetual inventory system provides timely information for managing inventory. The perpetual system keeps our cost of goods sold, cost of merchandise sold account continually current. Under the periodic system, purchases account records inventory purchased. The accounting records do not record the selling of inventory as it happens. The physical inventory count must take place to determine the cost of merchandise, cost of goods sold. Let's take a look at an example. Amelia's Gluten-Free Bakery uses a periodic inventory system. Compute Amelia's cost of merchandise sold for November based on the following information. Inventory November 1st, $280. Merchandise purchased, $1,000. Merchandise returned due to quality problems, $50. Discounts on merchandise purchase $20. Delivery costs for merchandise purchase $45. Inventory on November 30th, $350. Here I have a schedule set. And my schedule starts with beginning inventory. Notice that I have input the purchase schedule right within the cost of goods sold schedule. Merchandise inventory, $280. I have my purchases, minus my purchase returns and allowances, minus my purchase discount, to give me net purchases, $930. I'm going to add in my transportation in cost for $975, being my cost of merchandise purchased. My merchandise available for, sa for sale is my beginning inventory, plus my cost of purchases, $1,255. My ending inventory, $350. The cost of merchandise sold is therefore $905.